had recorded when I first started reading this book. Um, I had a couple of clips recorded that I guess I accidentally deleted. So now you get this uh, intro with the poor lighting. But um, I promise you, this, this book put me on a wild ride. Not necessarily in the best way. <laughs> but um, if you're interested to hear my thoughts, keep watching. Um, at the start, this book really hooked me and um, had a lot of potential. So now I will um, show the rest of the clips for what happened next. Okay, so I have made quite a bit of progress. Getting close to the end. I'm on chapter 13 now, about to start that. Um, this book, I think I mentioned in the last clip, is it's, it's slow. I feel like it probably could have started, let's see, honestly the story could have actually started in chapter 8. The first seven aren't really necessary, so I don't like that that's kind of how it's playing out. Um, I wish the plot was a little bit more paced. Um, I mean, maybe they could, he could have done like a, um, a little snippet of what happened previously because there's like the first seven chapters take place, right? And then um, at some point there is uh, a time jump for two years. And um, I think that's in chapter seven when that starts. So chapter three could have been chapter one and then there'd be that time jump somewhere maybe even in the same chapter, I don't know. And then it actually picks up on chapter eight. And then they, he just kind of does like a recap of like the backstory that's described in the first seven of um, Blyben. Because there's a lot of unnecessary backstory, a lot of things that aren't, they don't move the plot forward at all. It's just regular, conversations and like there's this one scene where Blyvin gets summoned to um, the office for the military and you know he's expecting to set sail right to get assigned to a ship and then like oh there was a miscommunication go on back home that wasn't necessary <laughs> so I don't like that um, but I am still enjoying it. I am still liking it. It's just, it's real slow. But now that things are starting to pick up, I think I'll like it a bit more. And um, yeah, I'm still, every time, every time I try and film, I swear. Okay, so I have officially finished this book. These chapters are ridiculously long. Like some of these are only a little over 10 pages long, that's fine, that's a good amount. But then others are like 30, over 30 pages long. Let me see if I can find a good example of that. Oh, here's a good example. From chapter 11 until chapter 12, it's it's like a um, 29 page difference. <laughs> there is no need for chapters to be that long. It, it was a little ridiculous. It was hard to finish and read through because of that, for one thing. Also, I liked Blyvin at the beginning. You probably saw that earlier in this vlog. I kind of liked him. I liked that he had some sass, you know? Um, I, I liked that. But then, like, somewhere along the way, he kind of loses that. And, I don't know. It was just weird. And then, like I said, like, the first seven chapters, you could probably cut out. And there was so much pointless stuff going on. I, I, you know, I was close, getting close to the end of the book, and I was telling my husband, like, at this point, there's so many side plots. I don't remember what the main one is anymore. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I don't know. And then, apparently, this is part of the series. I saw. Um, I remember seeing at the. 
at the back um, earlier in this vlog. I think it was either that video, this video, or my TBR list that I saw on the back that like there was an, another one out. Um, um, I will not be continuing this series. Uh, sorry, James. I, I can't do it. Um, there was... Yeah, like, okay, here's the thing. It's a book about war, right? War in 1801. I can understand that there would be politics involved. I expect that in a war book. If there isn't politics involved, you're writing a war, war book wrong. <laughs> Um, because it's not, tr it's not truthful, right? Um, when there's war, there's gonna be politics. But, it feels weird to say something like this, especially now that I know it's based on a real war. Mm -hmm. There was very little fighting. And that was weird to me. Because, again, like, it's a book about war. There's gonna be fighting. Like, especially because this, Blyvin is a, a sailor. He's literally part of the Navy. And my cat is playing with his tail. I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, Blyvin's part of the Navy. He, you know... <laughs> I'm sorry, this is very distracting. I'm trying to talk. Um, but... So I was expecting a lot more fighting than what actually happened. And there was a lot of pointless drama, like... Honestly, I don't know what I can say about this book that isn't spoilers because, like I said, like the main plot gets so lost. I don't know what's technical spoilers and what's not, so I'm, I'm just gonna say everything, and if it spoils it, I'm sorry. Okay, Garrus has left, <laughs> so I'll be able to focus a little bit more. Um, but there's uh, one part towards the end where um, Blyvin and like his captain or Commodore... I don't remember anymore. Um, and I just finished this book yesterday. I, it's already so forgettable. Um, they, they're they in... Not America. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It, I don't know. They, they were somewhere. And there were... The book was starting to describe that there were... Um, belly dancers there. And they were kind of there on like a political meeting, right? And you know, it's, it was treated as like this entertainment thing, right? 1801, you gotta have something to do, right? Um, it makes sense. And then, but then, and so like when, when, it, when the belly dancers were first described, I thought like, okay, at least 16. Like, that's a little ick still, but it's 1801. It's Okay, you know, didn't know better, really. I mean, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, no. No, it was so much worse than that. The belly dancers were, like, ten. And they were taking grown men behind a beaded curtain. And I bring up that scene because, I mean, for one thing, like... It, <laughs> Unfortunately, stuff like that happened, um, which, it, you know, it was unpleasant to read about, of course, but um, the weird thing about that scene to me was that, like, one of the sailors, um, he went behind one of the beaded curtains with one of the dancers, and, and then not long after you hear him like scream and he's like freaking out right and it's because the belly dancer is actually a boy and like okay 18 again 1801 that would have been a big deal back then not so much now but back then yeah it would um but what, what i'm confused about and the book never explains it because like it's such a pointless side plot is that like okay were they all boys? Did a boy sneak in? How did that happen? I don't understand that. I, 
I don't know. And then it's just, like, left off of that, and then in the next scene, they're back on the ship, and, you know, the sailor dude is just shook. <laughs> and it's just, it's so weird. There was a lot of stuff, like, a lot of mention about um, harems and stuff like that um, in this book, which, again, is to be expected. Uh, was uncomfortable to read about, but it was to be expected. But the, the weird thing is, is that the girl um, and her dad... Uh, um, they're like um, they're important people to like the US government or whatever right and so the girl is like 15, 16 or she was 15 when they were first captured right and then two years later the rest of the story takes place the thing that bothers me is that Rebecca the girl that got kidnapped with her dad She she gets back after Blyven and his team save her and, like, you know, all that. And, you know, she talks about, like, well, you know, I actually, like, they didn't hurt me at all. They didn't do anything. Um, and they're like, oh, okay, well, that's good. And there's another girl that's, that Rebecca is talking to, and and I think her name was Susan. I don't remember it, I don't care to check. But we're just going to call her Susan then. Um, but Rebecca and Susan were talking, and then, you know, she mentions, like, you know, they didn't, they didn't touch me, they didn't do anything, right? And she was like, oh, okay, that's good, right? And Rebecca just goes, no, it's not. Because that means I'm not attractive. I... Why? <laughs> like, okay, look, here's the thing. Again, I could probably excuse it because of the time that it takes place in, right? But... But everyone else was having that same reaction, so it's not like it was a cultural thing, at least not, again, not to my knowledge. I don't know much about history, so forgive me if what I'm saying is um, historically inaccurate. But as far as I know, that's a ridiculous reaction, regardless of the time <laughs> that it takes place in. Um, and I, I, like, I want to give this character the benefit of the doubt because it's like, you know, um, you know, she spent two years in um, captivity, right? So that's going to be weighing on a person. And, you know, maybe a bit of Stockholm Syndrome set in there. So, you know, I want to have sympathy towards that. But, like, I... It still drives me crazy. It still drives me crazy. Because, like, I don't want, like, I don't know about the author. But I wouldn't want someone who is young, like, you know, around 15, 16, to pick this book up and think that that kind of mentality is okay. Like, it's not, it's not that hard to write a book that sends good messages. It's not that hard. I don't understand. Like, You can write a book about a war and still have a good message at the end of it. And I know, like, that that was just, like, one piece of the book um, that didn't have a good message around it. I mean, there were some other things, too, that, like, I didn't like. I didn't feel like I had a good message. I don't remember what they were right now because, like I said, like, the book gets so confusing. But, you know, there, there were a lot of things that was just like, oh, that's not okay. Um... But yeah, like that, that part really stuck out to me with, with Rebecca and Susan um, talking like that. Because it's like, the, that's not, I don't know who the audience, like what audience this book is intended for, if it's adults or YA. This came out in 2016, so that's something to keep in mind too. I don't know what kind of difference it makes, but okay. It, it doesn't say like if it's young adult or adult. But 
I'm certainly hoping he wasn't trying to, or they, I should say, because I don't know his pronouns. I don't know their proper pronouns, so I'm trying. I'm trying to get better with just saying they as like a general thing. That way, I don't misgender anybody. But I don't know what their intended audience was. was. Um, and I'm hoping it wasn't a younger audience. Um, just because of that, and also like the ending. It was so bland, man. It was so bland. I. <laughs> Oh, that was another thing. That was another thing. I just remembered. Okay, so again, near the end, within like the um, second last chapter, and like chapter 17 was just a wild ride in probably the worst way. In chapter 17, uh, I think. Anyway, he gets a letter from like this girl that he um, had gotten to know over the two years that he spent um, at home. And, you know, they were writing letters to each other and whatever. And she gets this letter, or he gets he gets a letter from her. I mean, she talks about um, the pastor, Re reverend, reverend, that's the proper uh, title, um, that I, I think I mentioned earlier in this vlog that, like, he was... Um, that like Blyvin had kind of like been sassy with and it was kind of funny um but she mentions him and saying that like oh you know like he's um turned against slavery like he's not um he's not into slavery anymore and he's preaching against it and you know stuff like that and he, he's doing what he can to rise up against it that that's the, pretty much all she said about it. And Blyvin over here gets stupid jealous for literally no reason. <laughs> Again, I don't know if it was about the times or what, but he he was complaining, like kind of like in his thoughts, of like um. Oh, she's speaking so highly of him. It's like, no, she's literally just saying what he, like, his political stance was. That's not saying that, oh, he's this beautiful piece of man and you're trash now. Like, no, that's not what she's saying at all. I don't understand his mentality on that. And we, we're, we're mostly in his perspective. So it's like, what? What? And so he gets all on a huff about it. Um, talk about fragile masculinity, but <laughs> he gets all in a huff about it. And like, the weird thing was like, he gets so angry and like, he kind of has like some thoughts about like, oh, well, how could this reverend dude like have, like you'd think such awful things. Um, but it's like, no, he's wanting to abolish slavery, and he's fighting against it. And the whole time, until that point, Blyvin was against slavery too. So why would he get mad at somebody saying that he shared the same opinion on the subject? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And, and then, and then he cheats on her. He literally sleeps with another woman. Because he's like, oh, I don't know if we're still going to be together by the time I get home. She just mentioned another man in her letter. What are you talking about? And he just, just like, oh, I'm going to go have a one night stand now. Um, hi, Ross. <laughs> Apparently, we got a Ross and Rachel situation here. But, like, she didn't say anything about wanting to break up or whatever. And, you know, the book ending is, like, it's kind of inconclusive. 
because like I guess it's a series it it tried <laughs> the author tried to leave it on a cliffhanger it it didn't work <laughs> it didn't work um a lot of the last part of the book I ended up just skimming and like there was let me see if I can find it okay in the last chapter we have a letter that starts here okay this page is all part of that letter and this paragraph's a bit of a break and then it continues down here and then it stops the thing with their letters though that they send to each other is <laughs> they're just recapping at least from Blyden's perspective, it's just recapping what I just read, what I already know. And so it's really repetitive, and I didn't like it. Well, anyways, I could probably rant about this book for a while because I'm doing more, like, rant-style reviews than I want to. I'm, I wanted to like this book. It sounded so good. Like, I read that first page in my, um... TBR list video and it sounded so good now I'm concerned for the other books that I picked up I, uh, I don't know you guys I don't know I'm, I have my concerns this was one of the ones that I wanted to read first and yeah so, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to pick books that I think I would actually like, and then I don't, <laughs> for so many different reasons, but like, when I read a book and I don't like it, for one reason or another, I kind of want to say something about it, because... For one thing, I want to be informative as possible for, like, trigger warnings and stuff like that. Um, obviously with a book like this about war, like, you get violence, um, like I said, there was, um, a lot of mentions of, like, harems and, you know, stuff like what I, um, talked about before with the, with the belly dancers, that kind of thing, um, especially because of the times, um, slavery that's mentioned, um, discussed about like if it's right or wrong um so you know whenever you pick up like a historical fiction book like you can kind of expect at least this is the rule of thumb that i usually live by it's like you can kind of expect to um you know run into some of the stuff that is um problematic like that and as long as it's written well then i don't usually have a problem with it and i can usually push through it just fine um, even if I do have to take a break for a couple of days or so because it bothers me, right? And then I go back to it and try and finish it. But, yeah, so... If, if it wasn't for the ending and, like, the last couple of chapters happening the way that they did, I'd probably feel more neutral about this book. But because of those last few chapters, it made me not like it. And... I'm opinionated, so I gotta share it. <laughs> I I try and be fair and be honest and give authors the benefit of the, benefit of the doubt, but there, there there there's a line, there's a point when that just stops, and I just I I can't do it anymore. And James here definitely crossed that line for me. Um, it was. Yeah, they, they spent more time in conversations about the war and planning it out than actually doing anything about it. Um, do I recommend this book? Uh, not really. No. I mean, if you like historical fiction, um, and if you don't want to read necessarily about, like, all the combat that happens and stuff like that, there is combat in here. 
like I said, but it's just, it's very little. It was less than I was expecting. You know, uh, things like that. And if the things that I mentioned don't really bother you as much as they bother me, um, then sure, check it out. Um, and then, you know, if, if that's the case, then I think you'd like it. But if you are like me and share the, kind of the same opinions, um, then no. <laughs> then no, I do not recommend it. So I guess it just depends on who you are as a person, what your tastes are. I mean, it kind of is how it is with book recommendations anyways, but I feel like you have to be a specific kind of historical fiction and fan, enjoyer, reader, um, to like this one. I feel like this one is a bit more niche than what I was initially thinking. So yeah, anyways, now I'm done. <laughs> Now I'm gonna put this down, and I don't know, maybe my mom would want to read it. I don't know, I'll have to ask her, but, and then she can keep it if she wants, I don't really care, because I'm not gonna reread it. Um, but yeah, so that was my thoughts on Shores of Tripoli, I think. It, that's how my mom pronounced it. I, I, I talked to her about this book, and uh, she pronounced it Tripoli, whereas before I called it Tripoli. So I don't know. She's probably right. <laughs> um, but the Shores of Tripoli by Gems L. Haley. Um, so if you want to see more videos like this, um, like I said, I've been ranting a bit more than I want to be. I'm really hoping my next read is better. I keep saying that and then it doesn't happen. <laughs> so I have kind of low expectations. Anyways. Um, like I said, like I was saying, if you enjoyed this uh, video, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.